Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we are back with a Misfortune Updated Complete Guide for Patch 5.3b and onwards. But once again, as usual, don't forget to check out her basic guide that I'll link up in the cards above for your easy reference to take a look at her skills, leveling order, tips and tricks, as well as some of her combos. But with that said, now let's talk about her build, runes, and spells. So I've tested out Misfortune builds and runes Dr uh, like drastically, not dramatically, drastically, right? I've tried going the full lethality build, like starting off with Dustblade. I've tried PTA. I've tried, um, you know, Collector first item. I've tried all of all of these builds, and personally, from all of my testing, this is my favorite loadout, right? So let's take you guys through it. So first up, we're gonna start with the Gluttonous Greaves for the AD and the Omni Vamp. Then we're gonna go for that weird Jin kind of build that I showed you guys way back when, like at the start of the patch, where we are going for both Hextech Stormraiser and the Collector, which I mentioned in that video that I didn't really like the build on Jin because I felt that these two were kind of first item kind of items, and I felt that going for these like, um, you know, at both at one has to be a second item, right? It's not really nice. But on Misfortune, the story is different because on Jin, Collector is a first item. But on Misfortune, Collector is often a second item because very often on Misfortune, whether you're going for Lethality or Crit, if you're going for, you know, the uh, Crit, you're, you're probably going to go for Stormraiser or like Bloodthirster as a first item. If you're going for Lethality, you're probably going for Dustblade or Yomus as a first item. So Collector is often a second item, um, you know, on Misfortune. So that being the case, we can, of course, go for Stormraiser first item. Gives you that little bit of attack speed, that nice amount of attack damage. And of course, what we're really after is the Storm Arrow passive, which of course is going to get let you deal that bonus damage which procs on your Q so when you bounce off a minion onto someone that procs Stormraiser's damage same as Dustblade uh, of course um, so it procs Stormraiser's damage of course slowing your target and speeding you up as well to chase them down then we have the Collector which again gives you the same amount, same amount of AD gives you Armor Pen and gives you the Death and Taxes passive which on MF is very useful because uh, with her ulti, you're doing um, you know a lot of instances of damage so any one of those inst instances could bring your enemy to below 5% and proc the collector is a really good item on MF. Then of course being a crit build, the same classic two items which is IE as well as Mold Reminder. Now I will say that the Lethality build is fine as well and you can actually mix crit and Lethality but again out of all my testing I think this build is the best. And then for your last item you want to go for a defensive option something like Maw, GA, you know things like that, Sterex Gauge, even like Black Cleaver or, or whatnot. Yeah. So for the runes, again, I've tested both First Strike as well as uh, PTA. I will do a little bit more for comparison when we jump into the gameplay. But I personally think that Misfortune is all about bursting people down. Like, yes, you still have your passive that is more about dealing DPS compared to burst. But I still think you're mainly focusing on burst, right? The passive is just there to be there if you can't finish people off. So that being the case, I think First Strike is the way to go. I've tested PTA. And I think First Strike is just a superior rune, um, just overall. So First Strike it is for me. Budo, because you auto attack a decent amount, still as an ADC. Giant Slayer, uh, good against tanks. Of course, you can go cool to Gra against Squishies. And Alacrity for more attacks because we are re really lacking that in our build. And of course, we have Bone Planning for the defensive capabilities. And finally, we have Flash as well as Exhaust for our spells. All that said, now let's take a look at her gameplay. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Misfortune gameplay itself. Of course, before we really jump into it, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and of course, be sure to address them. So first things first, generally as MF, the support you want to play with is going to be a um, support with CC. So generally, this means like the engage supports, Nautilus, Leona, Alistar are kind of the best combos with MF, but certain... Uh, en Enchanters can still work, like Seraphine for example is a really strong combo with MF. Uh, of course the ulti combo for, with Seraphine MF is amazing. Morgana can work as well because she can root one person and that person is going to get bursted down by her ulti which you will see later on in this gameplay. Now we are against a Jin and a Bran and that's a very aggressive early game lane, right? Bran is, does a lot of damage in lane, Jin also very strong in lane. Um, however, MF herself is also very strong in lane, so it's very going to be a very competitive early game and whoever kind of wins early game uh, is probably just going to snowball and it's probably just going to take over the game from there. So early game very very important in this particular matchup and uh, you can see um, we are all jostling uh, for kind of position and jostling to kind of attempt to um, you know get the better of each other and uh, yeah it's, it's a really kind of exciting early game 
And here, you know, Morgana is just trying to basically land roots. I'm just trying to bounce off minions onto them, which I have not really been able to do successfully up till now, where I get a huge bounce onto Bran. And uh, here, Jin gets caught, so I'm trying to run them down. Um, they are really, really low, so I try to flash forward to get the bounce off of Bran onto Jin, but they actually play it really well with, with Bran flashing away. I'm not able to actually get, get um, the kill onto them, but eventually, on the long chase, we are both me and Morgana pick up a kill apiece. And we're able to take out the enemy bot lane. As I said, whoever gets the first like kills or whoever makes the first mistake, you know, it's likely going to determine the lane. And the fact that they died and we got the kills is amazing because this likely means that we are going to be taking over the lane and we will probably win the lane. So now I'm going to launch into a very brief dis brief discussion about press the attack or empowerment uh, versus first strike. Now personally, this is how I see Misfortune being played right now. Whether you go for crit or lethality, it's all about the burst damage on your Q for the most part, right? It's not really about your ulti as much anymore nowadays. It's really about your Q burst damage, bouncing off a minion like that onto the enemy and, you know, putting full marks on your passive that way. So it's 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 really important to deal a lot of burst damage. So that's why I think that first strike is better because it's obviously going to increase your Q initial damage, whether you go for lethality or whether you go for crit, getting that is just going to be amazing. And here is the combo, by the way, the Morgana Q into the Misfortune. Now, Lee Sin came in, killed the brand, we killed the, the Jin, and we've taken them out again. So as I said, probably whoever gets the first kills will take over the lane, which is kind of what's happening here. So I tested a lot of games with Press the Attackers. Initially, I believed that Press the Attack was the better rune, uh, but it just didn't really feel good because when you like hit the Q and burst, like get the burst initially, then you kind of had to run people down and try to prompt both Press the Attack as well as your passive uh, if you didn't actually hit your Q off of a bounce, right? If you hit your Q point blank, it's going to apply one stack and then you have to kind of run them down and like apply the rest of the, your, your passive stacks and then apply your press the attack stacks as well. And I really didn't enjoy that. I really felt that that wasn't how Misfortune was meant to be played. I felt that with first strike, just bursting people down was just better. So I personally think that first strike is the better rune, but I think press the attack is still okay. Now, first strike does come with a little bit of a drawback, which is not a very big deal, but um, with uh, press the attack, you can't actually just launch your E and stack your passive using your E because that's going to proc your first strike and it's going to waste your first strike because you want your first strike to proc on either your Q which is going to be majority of the time or on your ultimate which is also going to of course increase your ult damage by a lot. You don't want it to be proccing on your E because your E does basically no damage. It's really just there to apply stacks like this. So here you can see I'm able to burst down the brand, flash forward, unfortunately Jin exhaust me and I'm not able to finish the kill onto the brand but I'm still able to get a good trade. Here Morgana hits a max range um, route which allows me to once again combo together with her and pop a max range ulti to finish off the Jin under tower which is again really really huge. This also allows us to start hitting the tower again because Bran has to reset because he's at 0 HP and yeah so the, the, the drawback is kind of same as Essence Reaver which is that you can't just launch your um, E to start off the fight to stack up your, your passive. But that, in my opinion, is a pretty minor drawback. If you really wanted to, you still could do it if you're committing to the fight. Like, if you know you're gonna commit to the fight, you can still put your E down and then run up and, you know, start autoing or just, you know, launch your Q, you know, things like that. So now that we've taken up our tower, we actually want to rotate mid to try to get the plates from mid tower. Of course, Syndra is not really um, rotating and, you know, uh, here, Ambessa, is, uh, who's the enemy jungler, is actually here as well. Looks like she wants to engage on Morgana, so I'm hovering a little bit. Um, I have to reposition to behind Morgana because I don't want to walk past the Bran and Ambessa. Um, here, the dragon is up, so it looks like a fight is going to happen here. Morgana actually immunes the Ambessa ulti, I believe, with her with her, um, with her her black shield. I think that's what happened. I don't think Ambessa missed. I think it was just immune. Um, actually, wait, if it's immune, will Ambessa still launch at her? I'm, I'm not even sure, but whatever the case is, the Ambessa ulti does not connect onto her, and the, my wave gets pushed in, so I'm going to clear it. My jungler is not really, you know, cooperative, so instead I'm going to um, have to simply uh, go back to clearing the wave, which Jin is doing a very good job of pushing in. He actually loses a plate because the minions are able to take a plate, and he was not in local gold range. And here Varus is in deep trouble. Uh, for some reason, Lee Sin kicks him away instead of to, instead of like just not kicking him away, right? Like he basically saved the Varus there because he kicked Varus to safety. I could have came in and killed the Varus, but 
he got altered by the rest, he panics and kicks him away, which I, I hate it when Lee Sins do that, right? Like, you know, you you the difference between a good Lee Sin and like a, a not good or or a like horrible Lee Sin is really obvious. Like like I, I see so many times Lee Sin just kicking people away and saving their lives, which is like which is just not good, right? So anyways here we have our opportunity to um, you know, farm a little bit of mid plate, and we have to help out a little bit uh, with the Herald. And uh, unfortunately, the enemy team does already pick up the Herald. Um, but MF is uh, not MF. Morgana is able to hit a root, and it's kind of looking to be a little bit of a skirmish here. Now here, I'm running down Ambessa. Uh, I flash forward, finish the kill onto her. Now with like my first item, I am really really fed. So uh, as you saw there, I know I'm coming to the fight, so I just put my E down, which procs for a strike, and I'm just you know just running at her and just killing her. So here Jin, um, you know, is caught a little bit and um, does take a ton of damage. Lee Sin finishes the kill. I left him at 1 HP. Um, I couldn't finish the kill, of course, because um, no way I'm going to dive the tower, especially without my flash. Um, and yeah, Lee Sin is able to clean up and, you know, get the kill really cleanly. So we got we got a bunch of kills since our, our last recall. We can pick up both our uh, item components of our collector. And we're gonna have to go top because Varus is really pushing in now. Unfortunately for us, the plates are still up, and Varus is getting all of this plate gold, which is really horrible. Uh, but we're not able to really. I mean, honestly, it's not even our job to stop him from pushing. It's honestly, it should be like someone else, like Garen or Syndra, should be going over to stop the Varus and matching their lane, which is mainly Syndra's job, to be honest. But she only knows how to walk mid, right? So. Unfortunately, if your teammates are not cooperating and they're not playing macro, you have to kind of pick up the slack and I'm kind of forced to go here um, and, you know, of course stop him because if I don't, he's going to push under the wave and then he's maybe going to push into tier 2 tower and we definitely don't want that to be happening. So we got to kind of um, pick up the slack and instead do, um, you know, Syndra's job for her. Um, this does though give us enough goal with collecting those waves to get our collector and now we're on a 2 item spike. We're at 7.5k gold, which is by far the most gold in the game. However, you know, we have, you know, multiple people who are kind of close behind, like, like Garen, like, uh, like Varus, as well as uh, Ambessa, all kind of within uh, spitting distance of my goal. So it's not like I have a huge lead or anything like that. Now here, uh, Lee Sin goes in really deep for the brand, but uh, as a result, he's getting caught up himself. I don't think trading jungle for support is a good deal. Here, Ambessa out Syndra, and uh, unfortunately, I exhaust her, but Syndra is not able to survive, and... Um, yeah, unfortunately, enemy team is kind of all coming here, and we gotta start a back off. Like, it's me and Syndra. Um, now, Garen comes in, pinging us to attack, and I'm going in with the Garen. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not really in range to really reach anything, so I can't really, um, you know, do anything too much in, ter in, the, in terms of following up here. And getting mid tower is also really dangerous, because Varus has really good wave clear, and he can clear the wave pretty fast, so I don't want to overforce. Now here, Jin again, this instant clears the wave. We can't really get mid tower, so we're kind of wasting quite a bit of time mid. Although Garen is, of course, pushing uh, out top, and Bot is still kind of in a pushing state, so no, not a really big problem in the grand scheme of things. But you can see, like, you, you never really want to be walking mid lane and doing nothing. This kind of feels like horrible. But Dragon is spawning, so there's probably gonna be a fight there. And here, Ambessa goes in with the ulti, but fortunately, Morgana was behind me, so she ends up hitting Morgana because Morgana has lower HP than me, and the Ambessa ult hits the lowest HP target. Now, unfortunately, my team is all dying, and they're all collapsing on Garen. I can't help him because, like, he's getting collapsed on, like, on both sides. Like, two champions coming from each side, and I can't really stop, stop that, right? So here, uh, Syndra gets a nice combo onto Ambessa. Um, unfortunately, Ambessa has a huge shield from her, from her W there, and I'm not really able to really do anything to her. And uh, now all we can really do is to just farm. Because we can't contest the dragon without our jungler. Uh, it would be very foolish to do so. I'm not sure why Syndra is going to the dragon. Because like this is one of those, like honestly, I I'm just going to say it, it's a really stupid play. Because if you don't have a jungler, and if you're like only two people alive versus the entire enemy team alive, why are you going to the dragon? Because there's zero chance you're getting it. Like, okay, let's say even if you get it, right? Then you're not, it's, it's not worth it, right? So anyways here, very nice. Lee Sin kicks Viego right to me into melee range. Love it. Thank you very much, Lee Sin. And uh, yeah. So yeah, I definitely don't like this Lee Sin. He has kicked Varus away, save his life, and then kick Viego backwards. But kick Viego backwards into me, which is not what we want, right? Because Viego is going to like, you know, whack me because I, I'm in melee range, right? So anyways... Here, uh, we're kind of trying to catch somebody out, but again, I use my ult to clear the wave there. Sometimes using your ult to clear wave is 
um, uh, necessary slash good because honestly like with how big that wave was like if I cleared it with my auto text, it would take like uh like more than five seconds, right? But with my alt, it takes like a good one two seconds only. So sometimes the time you save, uh, on that is actually huge because you can see that by alting the wave, I saved time on clearing the wave, and I was able to basically follow up with my team onto helping with the kill, uh, onto the, uh, the Viego. Now here, unfortunately, I get rooted by Varus under the tower, and this actually lets him shut me down. And he then picks up a kill onto Syndra as well, and gets another uh or rather. I should say Viego gets a kill uh, onto Syndra as well, and he gets a shutdown as well. So a little bit of a boo-boo there. Um, we were trying to aggressively chase onto the Varus because he uh, was honestly really easy to kill. But the issue is that um, he had ult and he ulted me on the tower. And I tanked like two, three tower shots and I was gone. So that was definitely um, not what we wanted, but unfortunately that's what happened. So we you know, have to sit in the grey screen and reflect on our mistakes. Um, but we are able to, of course, pick up the IE as a third item, and now we're at a three item spike, and we are definitely really, really strong. Cresting um, over 10k, and now nearly at 11k gold. So here Baron is up, so we're kind of checking Baron as a team. And Best actually hits me with the ulti over the wall and I flash away, but honestly, she was kind of trolling here. She literally ulted into an entire enemy team of 5, so I think that I actually made a mistake. I don't think I actually should have flashed. I think exhaust was sufficient, but I kind of instant panicked and I just flashed and exhausted. Here we're trying to pick up the, the Baron, Lee Sin just needs to really just smite it. Viego tries to contest and I'm ulting him down. 121 gold from first strike there. Insane. And uh, I'm just... I mean, I don't really need to reset, so I'm kind of just farming minions. Uh, my team, however, does need to reset, and they're not doing so. So Syndra ends up dying. Lee Sin is uh, limping away, and so is Garen. Garen also not in the best of shapes. I'm not sure why Garen is pushing here, because um, he's really not doing too ho um, not doing too hot in terms of uh, health. But um, yeah. So surprisingly, the enemy team is the one pushing mid, despite the fact that we have Baron. Here, I'm trying to put a stop to them. I'm trying to run down um, Varus, but of course, I don't want to run into another ulti, which I don't know if he has or not. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, the TX is actually running running down the Lee Sin instead. I'm uh, running down, sorry, the, the uh, Jin instead with the, with the Lee Sin. And uh, here, I pick up the red buff share. And I'm going to go ahead and go mid and push with my TX. And Bessa coming in from the side. Tries to help me. I, I not only sidestep it, but I also uh, preemptively use my... My stasis to you know immune myself, not stasis. Use my quicksilver to immune myself to CC. Now, unfortunately, this opens uh, me up to going to getting murdered by Viego, who does pay for it with his life. But I think that's a good trade if you're Viego. I mean, you're 0 and 6 Viego at that point. I'm 0 and 5 Viego at that point in time, trading your life for a you know 6 and 1, uh, 6 1 and 10 misfortune. You know that's a really good trade uh, on his end. Now on my end, of course, that's horrible because I don't want to be dying. You know, um, you know when I'm you know, trying to carry my team. I mean, honestly, my team is not doing horrible. Everyone is kind of doing okay, but I do have the most goal on my team. And I do have the biggest lead on my team, so I definitely want to be alive to take advantage of that and, of course, uh, help my team get kills and help my team, you know, uh, push or, you know, get objectives. So speaking of objectives, uh, we have the Infernal Dragon spawning in, uh, you know, like right now, basically. Um, and the enemy team is on Soul Point. Um, they already have two dragons, and honestly, I don't really care that any team gets soul. Right? Um, however, I see that my Baron dies, so this basically means that um, there is really going to be hard to push. So instead of that, let's just, you know, deny them the soul. Yeah, so we get the dragon, we deny them the soul. Viego is down, now busy split pushing. I pick a blue buff, MF is really mana hungry, so having a blue buff is going to be nice. And we're now heading down to see if we can maybe stop the Viego, but on the way I'm just farming, so we're not going to care about Viego anymore. We're going to let Garen catch the wave, and we're just going to find farm wherever we can. And now currently no objective is up, so it's kind of that weird mid-game where, you know, there's nothing really going on now, so we're kind of just walking around and trying to, trying to farm wherever we can. Baron's coming up in 40 seconds, but that's still, you know, some time away. And here I'm taking the enemy enemy jungle. Syndra is really deep in. I think that's a really aggressive position that's not very good. I'm pinging her back. But uh turns out she just one-shots people. Like at this point, Syndra is so fed that she has three uh you know full items and she's able to basically one combo 
um, Sama, which you will maybe see that if she's in the same screen as me, you know, later on in the match. But in the match itself, I was like, wow, the Syndra is one-shotting people. Um, and it comes a point where I basically get outskilled by my Syndra, and she just does one-tapping, like, you know, people, multiple people at the same time. And, and yeah, she doesn't even ult, like, she just basic combos them, and they just basically nearly get one-shot, which is insane. Um, which also proves my point of how I think Syndra is one of the best mid laners in the game. I hear my Garen is getting chased, so here I'm putting down a very defensive ult, which is basically like if you want to chase my Garen, you're gonna have to eat the ult. And the brand decides to do that, and I'm able to murder him because um, he eats my entire now. And Bessa is now trying to chase me down as I'm trying to ping for Baron. My Lee Sin is going for the in hit. Again, I'm able to dodge the Ambessa ulti. I didn't actually need to QSS there. And here we try to start the Baron, but Lee Sin gets one shot by the Vera, so unfortunately, we can't do the Baron anymore because our jungler. Um, I actually don't know what he was doing, right? We got the mid in him just now already, didn't we? Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if he just got it now or he got it just not. R regardless, why are you going there anyway? Like, if we haven't got the in yet, it, it's not as important as Baron. Baron is more important than in -hip. So we shouldn't be going for that, that in hip or I if even worse, if it, it's already down, he, we shouldn't be pushing mid lane for nothing. Uh, we should be going to the uh, Baron instead, but unfortunately because our Lee Sin is dead, we can't really do that. And instead, um, we're going to have to take a reset. We complete all four of our crit items now, building towards our last item. And uh, and yeah, so here again, Syndra one shots the Jin, and I'm just like I I'm panning the mini map as I'm farming, because again, I don't have to look at myself, you know, get farm right. So I'm looking at the mini map as I'm farming, and I'm like, whoa, you know, Syndra just one shotting them left and right. So here I I scare the brand away, and now I'm gonna go for the tower, which I'm able to get pretty easily. So that gives us all of our charges. Now, unfortunately, she gets caught by Ambessa ult, and I'm trying to see if I can help her, but I can't, and uh, she ends up getting taken out. Intense 1v1 uh, with the Viego versus the Garen in the top side, and the Elder Dragon's coming up in 10 seconds. Both junglers are kind of making their way towards top side. Here, Varus just tries to ignore me and walk past me, like the disrespect. <laughs> I'm just gonna flash on him and kill him. Um, we already know he probably used his ult. Uh, for the kill on the Syndra. Alright, we know that we use it, he uses ult on the Syndra because we saw that happen on the minimap. Anyways, here Ambessa is trying to run away. She has a, v a lot of mobility, of course, with her passive. However, I'm able to bounce onto her and get the kill because of the minion wave. Unfortunately, though, my Garen is in trouble, runs away from me so I can't block for him, and I eat a huge 4th shot from Jin. Now, because of that, I do have to... Reset, I need my team to go to the Elder Dragon because my Syndra has just respawned and we have three people dead on the enemy team, including the enemy jungler who's still going to be dead for the next half a minute. So we really need to get a free Elder Dragon. I'm paying assist on Lee Sin, but he is having none of it. He's just straight up pushing the opposite side of the map. Now, I'm pretty sure the enemy minion saw me walking over here, so I'm pretty sure the enemy team knows I'm doing Elder. I mean, even if they don't see it from the minions, like just common sense would tell you that I'm doing the Elder, right? So here I'm popping the Blast Plan to ensure the enemy team can just easily hop over. I put the ward behind to try to check for a steal. Lee Sin still pushing in the mid lane. And uh, thankfully though, no one even comes here. Viego attempts to come here, I guess. But we secure the Elder uh, without the help of our jungler. And with the Elder, um, you know, it's, it's uh, going to be insane, right? I'm already full build with the Maw as well to help me against the Varus as well as the Bren. And... Um, yeah, you know, we can see if we can get off a good out, we can see if we can get off a good bounce, and you know, Syndra, by the way, there, he, she just one combo them without her ult there, because her ult was on cooldown, and with that, we should be able to just force the game, and only Viego and Ambessa are left, they can't, uh, you know, defend by themselves, so here, you know, Elder just props, Ambessa tries to come back to the base, doesn't really work out, and we get the win. So anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching the video, I'm gonna leave you guys with the stats as usual, and goodbye.